What up, all first family? Hope you all doing well. I know we're coming back to y'all with the 2019 way we used to do interviews and not the 2022 way. But we had to get this out, throw it out right quick. We'll be coming back with y'all with some fresh interviews at the beginning of the week. But we just had to come out and put this out. We got some audio from my boy Lil C Style from jail that we want to play. But before we get into that, I just want to take my little victory dance and uh, remind y'all, I want y'all to take a look at this. John about to post it up. I know y'all probably, most of y'all done already heard about it because it's about a day old. But uh, I've been telling y'all what our boy doing while he was being trying to rewrite history on us because he's about to do a, uh, a documentary or a bio picture uh, either on death row or himself. Uh, got conflicting reports out there which one he's going to do it. But uh, y'all can read the post and read the article yourselves. Wanted to also wish all my uh, veterans out there a happy vet Veterans Day. Mainly my boy D Block, who I know is a big time vet and a big time supporter of the channel. And so, you know, for any of you vets out there or your parents, just wanted to wish y'all a happy uh, Veterans Day. Thirdly, and lastly, before we play the interview from Lil C Style, I wanted to also uh, give uh, condolences and have John also post up uh, the information on a producer that did a lot of work for Death Row on the road days <laughs> on the uh, album The Chronic 2000. Y'all hear us talk about my boy Arthur that Dialogue Channel made real popular. He went over there and did a great interview over there. And he also did a couple of live streams with us, if y'all don't know anything about him. But uh, Kurt Cobain, uh, just wanted to, you know, he passed uh, this week. Uh, and it was a shock to everybody because I would just talk to him. Uh, he was preparing to do an interview with us. Uh, but just talked to him less than a week, weekend, 10 days ago. And I um, got the news that he uh, passed away a few days ago. And so, hey, we just want to come with y'all real, real quick. And uh, John did an interview with our boy Lil C Style, uh, who was on a couple of songs. One of my favorite songs on uh, on the Chronic. Uh, I'm sorry, on Murder Was the Case soundtrack, track seven. <laughs> with our boy Sue G and um, he explained that song and Easy to Be a Soldier's What It Ain't No War. He also did a diss song on Death Row called Death Row Bitches, but Lil C Style. Uh, he's a good dude and he'll explain to y'all. So we're going to do break this up in parts. We're going to do a part one and then we'll do a part two uh, sometime next week. And so... John, you can take over and start your interview. All right, little Seesaw, we appreciate you uh, calling in. Um, obviously, you're calling in from the pen. Can you um, let people know what you're currently accused of and what your situation is right now? Uh, yeah, I was uh, wrongfully convicted for an attempted murder. I placed the wrong can you talk talk a little bit about some of the songs that you're on? I know you're on um, Easy Be a Soldier, but you were on like Murder Was the Case on um, Who Got Some Gangster Shit, uh, and I think you were the one that actually had the verse about Lil C stuff, or I'm sorry, about Lil Half Dead. Can you talk about what led to that? Oh uh, yeah, uh, oh yeah, that stemmed from a uh, that stemmed from an incident, man, that happened at the VIP, man, between Young Swoop and. Uh, have did, but I wasn't there. But that's why in the song I say I wish I was there with a clown. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time we all was young, and it was we was at a time where 
like we've outgrown trying to prove ourselves now. But back then, it was all about, you know, not taking no shit from nobody. So, you know, that's where that uh, verse has, that's where that verse has stemmed from. Not knowing that it would be that big and sell 5.3 million copies. Nobody never thought that. At least I did it. Okay. Um, you ended up leaving Death Row and then coming back um, for Chronic 2000 later on. What made you come back yeah. and who was running the label when you came back? This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. At the time, I was never on Death Row. I just was so close to Death Row because Snoop was my buddy. So it just so happens that uh, by him being my childhood friend and being my buddy, you know, I was always around. But then after the Dog Pound and the Doggy Style Records and all those uh, deals like with 19th Street Records and Capitol Records, after all that stuff kind of like played out, after that, it was like, you know, the incident as far as with Suge going to jail and Reggie being over there at the company. I remember seeing Reggie with Swoop, and Swoop was telling me that they was doing a project, Chronic 2000, and they wanted me to get on it. So when I went to go do that verse, you know, I wasn't signed to no major label at the time. So, yeah, I didn't have a problem with signing with Death Row. But technically, I never got away or, or left Death Row because... Originally, I wasn't on Death Row. I was just signing the Doggy Style Records, and we was doing projects at can -Am Records and things like that. So people just assumed that I was with Death Row. But I've always been, day one, a uh, Dog Pound member. Okay. And then there was always an, in, uh, an infamous uh, incident with the LBC Crew album where Snoop said that the album didn't come out because you had differences with the group and that you um, you would he The way he said it was that you... you broke the tape, but obviously we know that's not accurate. But can you explain what happened with the LBC crew album? Man, to tell you the truth, I was so young at that time. But as far as the business side, I wasn't never even focused on the business side. I just was showing up to the studio when it was beats to get on, get on the songs, do the music. I never was in like those meetings or boardrooms where they were discussing what they would do with the project. So technically, really, I don't know what happened. I mean, I can't point the blame at nobody, and I can't say who's the fault with that. But it did eventually come out, though, in 2000. And what was that, 11 or 12? Yeah. We ended up putting it out. I think if we would have put it out back then, it would have made a bigger It would have made a bigger buzz. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. And then after Chronic 2000, at some point, you recorded a song with Snoop Dogg called um, Death Row is Bitches. Do you remember that song? And can you tell me about the reason behind it? <laughs> I think I did that before. I think I even did that before that. That was something that uh, I did in like 98. And I think Snoop just ended up putting it out once he found out that I was on Death Row. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Trying to like smut a motherfucker out. Hey, one second. Okay. Hey, hey, it's somebody phone time, right? I'm going to call you back. Okay. So, Ball First Family, hope you all appreciate hearing from Lil C Style. You all know how it is, audio from calling people uh, when they call in, checking in from us from jail uh, or from prison. Um, but we'll be doing a part two next week, like I said, and you all can hear some more, um, you know, audio from him. And if um, you got any more comments or any any questions that y'all want us to ask, let us know because he'll be checking in with us periodically because we don't rekindle and develop the relationship as Reggie always do with guys from both sides of, of their from. Um, like I always try to tell y'all, bomb first is where you get the get the real at. So anyway, hope y'all enjoyed the, the interview. And we'll be tapping at y'all tomorrow.